And there we go. We're recording. All right. Episode two underway. Yeah. We can start with some hot Uncle Drew talk. Hot <laughs> Uncle Drew talk. Let's hold on. I got to do one more thing because I think we're on. We'll see what this, if this switches ever. This is supposed to switch. We got a whole system here that's, uh, it's working questionably. So you do, you have a really intense setup for a home podcast. For that home like you podcast. could, you could definitely rent this studio out to adult filmmakers on the weekends. And they could, I mean, how do you I think did, I pay the mortgage? Uh, smart. Uh-huh. That's smart. It's like they don't live here overnight. It's not, you know, sometimes people would be like, oh, you can get an extra roommate. It's like, I'm not going to have a roommate with my family here. But if you just have some porn stars coming in on the weekends and leaving before exactly. bedtime, it works out great. That's Same what the money. realtor told us, and they were right. <laughs> Let's see. I didn't even realize that the, you had cameras going until about halfway through last week. Oh, really? That's so funny. Yeah. And at that point, I was like, I would never gave my consent to be filmed. But here we are. I, th- I think we can go back in some messages, and I can <laughs> I can clear myself legally at the minimum. Um, okay, so this this will be as good as it's going to be. I'm not going to fight it any longer. Last time I planned on having it switch back and forth, and I just yeah. ended up doing a split screen. Which, if you don't like it, fuck yourself. It's episode one of a podcast you're listening to for free. It's true. So yeah. um, we're making no money right now. Yet, yet we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, Okay, well, welcome back to my house where where uh, I paid the mortgage by allowing people to fuck on this table, and now we're <laughs> drinking off of it. So. That's that explains why it's pretty clean. Mm-hmm. You got to keep it clean. I'm bringing a black light next week. We're gonna check this room out. <laughs> <laughs> this don't do that. The, the, the terrifying thing is There's we never did co- that before we moved yeah. in. So the the like don't get me wrong. I'm we can sure. just blame the last owner. Yeah, yeah like, that's, right. that's all from them. That's right. I didn't do any. I didn't do that in that chair. Or These a, that keyboard fucks, or this keyboard. Yeah, they came into my old apartment and came on that chair. That's <laughs> how. <laughs> by the way, the uh, FCC. This is why it's good. This is not on the radio. Do you ever? Yeah. Do you ever? Uh, I, I wanted to do sports radio so bad when I was a kid. Yeah. And now I think about how like hamstrung I would be uh, by the I, FCC. I mean, I do other. I've done other podcasts and i currently do another podcast which no one listens to or the past ones too it's fine sure you don't don't feel obligated to but (laughs) they are through they are uh, through the uh the radio station so we are limited by the fcc which it's one of those things where we could go back and censor out swearing but that's a real painstaking editing process yes so rather than do that we just try not to swear which is hard Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> because I think I, I feel like for people who have real jobs now, like people swear on Zoom calls all the time. Dude, I know. Like just nonstop. So even when you're at work now, you're like you're, you're not as filtered as you used to be. And uh, so to actually have to sit down and talk for like an hour without swearing as an adult. Very difficult. I remember when I was a kid, I was like, uh, well, when I'm when I own a business one day. Uh, I want to let all of my employees wear basketball shoes and basketball <laughs> shorts every day. Uh, That's how you own a baseball card show. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, by the way, how you I work at my house now. Like yeah, it's, that's it's true. exactly my. Yeah, we w- I wear basketball shorts. I don't wear basketball shoes. I wear no shoes all day. Yeah, and uh, yeah, swear in meetings. All the decorum I was trying to rebel <laughs> against, like they went well past what I thought I was going to have to fight against, you know? Yeah. It's, it's really changed, man. The first time there's the problem is there's always like one or two people you work with that like really make a big show of the cussing. Yes. Like, and it's always like an exec level guy who has mm-hmm. no clue what he's doing. <laughs> I had a boss who was, uh, the only word we weren't allowed to say in meetings was fuck. And if you said fuck, you just said, it wasn't like you got in trouble. You just had to put five bucks in like a swear jar for yeah. future beer. She put so much more money in that swear jar than anybody else. Like, it's funny how quickly that just goes away the moment there's actually when it's like a medium penalty attached to it. Yeah, you're like, oh fuck it then. Dude, and uh, yeah. literally, an office case. swear jar is actually a pretty good idea. I like. I mean, this everyone knows about a swear jar. You have it at home or whatever, but to have one at the office. Yeah, that's be- that's beneficial to all. Yeah, like, that's a pizza party after a while. Yeah, and no, that's, it's... that's the only thing that keeps you going to an office is pizza. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> um, yeah, how was your? Uh, Super Bowl. What did you do for the Super Bowl? Man, this was uh, the first year that we didn't do anything for the Super Bowl. We just, we really just wanted to sit at home and do nothing, and we accomplished it with our dogs. Nice. So it was weird. I mean, like most years, I go hang out with friends, and 
um, it's like an it's an exhausting event. Usually, the Super Bowl is like you you, you it's kind of like having an all day party, but in the middle of the day. Yes. Which by the time like when you're finally out of it, you're like, oh my god, it's it's eight o'clock, mm-hmm. you know, and then you have to go to work the next day typically. So that's always. I know that's, that's such a they, the day after the Super Bowl should be a national holiday. I think I actually had the day off, so you got to. I had a like a, not much of a hangover. <laughs> Yeah. Um, my brother-in-law is an Eagles fan. Yeah. And uh, I texted my sister yeah. uh, after the game, and I was like, how is he? And she goes, he's hammered. And I go, does that predate or postdate the loss? And she goes, it predates the loss, but it came – or no, what it, uh, it came before the loss, yeah. but immediately after the Eagles lost the lead. Okay. And so, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I haven't checked in on him today. I should. I was supposed to. I'm a, I'm a big, like, host, have people over to my house. I cook food and, and provide alcohol. And um, we were going to do that. And then on Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, my mom broke her leg. Oh, my God. I know. And so I, I still went to my comedy show because I'm a bad son. But I, uh, <laughs> I all the stuff, like all the prep. And obviously, she was – we were going to have a pretty light group this year because yeah. my – uh, sister and brother-in-law went to this bar called Buckley's in Seattle. Which oh, yeah, is like, I've been there many times. Oh, yeah, this is apparently yeah. an Eagles bar. Oh, I didn't know that. And it's also um, <laughs> that like when they lived in Seattle, they they moved to Chicago for a while, but before yeah. they moved to Chicago, they went to Buckley's all the time. So it's I've been there, I think, once or zero times, but every time I go to a bar with them, it's too loud, it's the music's too yeah. loud, there's too many people. Yeah. The Super Bowl is not really a bar event. It's it's I've done it before and it's not fun because you can't like even if they have the audio on, you can't really hear right. it. And like part of the fun of the Super Bowl is like watching the commercials. That is that there mm-hmm. is something to be said for that, which makes it a great home viewing event. And also, man, like going to a bar in Seattle in your thirties sucks. It Dude. just like down like any part of Seattle where it's like hard to park, it's just it's a pain in the ass. And everybody there <laughs> It just it reminds you of you ten to fifteen years ago, and you're like, man, I was an asshole. Yes. How did I make it this far? Yeah. I, yes. All those things are true. I um, the time I went to the bar for the Super Bowl was the year the Seahawks played in. It was in New York when they won, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, they lost in Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So I was uh, yeah. I was uh. And they lost in Detroit many years prior to that. Of course. What a place to be a loser. <laughs> yeah. They've kind of been all over the map with their Super Bowls in a way. Yeah. So anyways, I go down to – we went to downtown just to, like, be in Seattle for it. Like, yeah. I thought it would be cool. We try to find a spot at a bar. Every bar, as you would imagine, is packed. Oh, yeah. Uh, we end up – coincidentally, I did not do comedy at the time, but uh, we went down to the, the Comedy Underground, yeah. which was open at the time, had a projector against the wall. There was like not enough seats for everybody with each other. So then we, but you could, we could have all sat down there and watched it against this projector. Yeah. But uh, we had like six people. We walk all the way up to like Belltown, come back down, end up back at the same place in Swanee's. Yeah. Above the comedy underground. Yeah. yeah. And we yeah. had like a booth with like a 26 inch screen. And you're like, at that point, I should just be at fucking home, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's why it's just, it's just not a great. Yeah, it was cool to be out there. Like the, it was wild to be there after yeah. the game. Like this is the year that uh, I can't think of his name, but the the Huskies quarterback C.J. Miles uh, got in a fight. C.J. No, not C.J. Miles. C, uh, a cornerback? No, quarterback. Oh, quarterback. Not C.J. Oh, oh, like for the he wasn't in the Super Bowl. Yeah, not C.J. Siler Miles. Siler Miles. There we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah. He got in a big fight after <laughs> yeah. the game because he was a Broncos fan. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Man, I forgot about Siler. I kind of erased him from my memory because it was such a bad time in Husky football fandom. Yeah, and that actually, by the way, it goes against who was he like splitting time with that year. Oh, God. A couple of different guys, if I remember. There was the dude that uh, – Troy Williams, who transferred okay. to Utah and actually was, like, pretty okay in, like, his one or two years at Utah. Sure. And there was another dude. There was a – I know there was a Jake because we talked – maybe that was – those were the years that would have been the – Oh, it could have been the uh, Jake Jeff Lindquist. Years. Was it Jeff Lindquist? Remember that? Oh, I think Jeff Lindquist was around there. This is going deep into the Husky family. You're probably like – yeah, I guess it was probably like Isaiah Stanbeck into Siler Miles. Which no, there was, there, there was a big gap. There was like – between Stanbeck and Miles was probably like 
six or seven years. Okay, so then I'm thinking so and yeah. Stanbeck maybe I'm thinking Stanbeck comes before the first Jake in the Jakes, the like yeah. before Locker. Yeah, because because yeah, Miles right. was after Locker. For gotcha. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It feels like a long time ago. I know. Well, it is a long time ago. It's it probably, does, it actually doesn't feel like ago. it was that long ago. That I mean, like Isaiah Stanbeck feels like a pretty contemporary football player. No. And no now enough. he's now he's like probably thirty seven years old. He's nice. probably he's like, older than me, and I'm thirty eight. So my God. He's like thirty nine or forty. Yeah. There was someone I looked up the other day <laughs> that I'm sure you know, everyone has this experience. It's not unique to me. It's not unique to you. But I looked up somebody, and I was like, Oh, uh, Chris Polk. I looked up Chris Polk. I was like, wow, I wonder if he's like, I mean, I know he hasn't been in the NFL for a couple of years, but he's probably like 26, 27. He's got to be floating around and, and he's 33 or something yeah. like that. Like if he had a fruitful NFL career, it would probably be over. Yeah, he had a couple years with the Eagles. And uh, it just, yeah, he was like a third down back kind of guy. And those right. guys last, what, like three or four years well, if things are going well. And he had the de- degenerative health condition. So it was like, yeah. uh, it was a, uh, that's like how you, I, uh, this isn't going to be obvious on camera. I don't even need to acknowledge it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I throw my phone across the room so I don't have to deal with the fucking constant notifications. I get it. I, I get it. The group chat thing is a real blessing and a curse. Can I say that? Uh, it depends how it's done. Uh, I prefer if you have a group chat through some sort of app. Like for a long time, I've had one on Facebook Messenger. Sure. Signal is another good app that uh, controls that Any thing. place you can plan an insurrection. Yes. That's that's, <laughs> that's where the group chat That's belongs. where I like to keep the <laughs> yeah. chats. But when they're text group chats, yeah, they suck. They're just terrible. Yeah. Well, especially like my, my – I have this Fitbit, and it gets only specific notifications, but one yeah. of them is texts, and it's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, it's a, anytime you have a big group chat, there's like one or two guys that are like, they send a lot of funny messages to them that aren't funny to everybody else. Yes. Like, you need to see your way out, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, Super Bowl, I uh, I spent it, I mean, a very exciting Super Bowl. I'm also, where do you fall on alcohol in the Super Bowl? In, like, do you think, are you a uh, drink more than a, an average event person on the Super Bowl? Uh, Yes, I guess because I had a drink <laughs> yesterday. So, I, mean, I guess typically at a party. Like, Am a I social- breaking you out of sobriety? Is this what's happening? Yeah, you, until you last week wagon? I was seven years sober, and look what you did. <laughs> no, that's not the case at all. Probably shouldn't joke about that. That's all uh, right. I, I mean, I'm not. I'm gonna. I have jokes. I literally have jokes about it in my act. So you're good. No, I mean, I'm. You're good I'm, my a, book. I'm a moderation person. So like yesterday, I had a drink, and I never would drink at like three p.m you know, ordinarily. Mm-hmm. So that's, uh, things have changed, man. 10 years ago, I was, I could pound. Yeah. You know, that was, it was a different time, but, uh, yeah, that's just, I just don't do that as much anymore. What about you? I'm a, uh, I try to not bundle my things I like yeah. with, with each other because I find that like, to me, this is unpopular, but I think alcohol and live sports are lesser than the sum of their parts. Okay. I like them both a lot separate from each other, but when it's like when I'm at a game, I start being like, ah, fuck, I kind of want another beer. And then I'm thinking about the beer and not the game that's going on in front of me. You know what I mean? And it's like, I just, or some, or I'm paying $14 for the beer and that's annoying. Like there's annoying shit attached to it that, uh, it's funny because like, can you imagine I've, I've bought some beer that's pretty expensive in my life. Yeah. Um, no way. (laughs) <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> but I, I've i always rationalized it. You tell people, like, th- I bought a $38 beer. That's the most expensive beer wow. I've ever bought. But you're like, if someone was like, I bought a $38 bottle of champagne or wine, you wouldn't be like, whoa. I know. It's, it is, it does, it's a different stigma with beer, for sure. Because yeah. beer is like, it's a little rougher around the edges. Every, right. All the other, like, liquor or champagne, wine, that all feels more refined somehow. Yeah. Even I though, like I like champagne, I, I, drink, I know that was the, that was actually a surprising thing to find out that you drink. I like, drink the Kirkland Costco signature prosecco. prosecco. Oh man, I love it! I <laughs> drink that at home. That's like the only thing I drink at home, man. How do you? Uh, my question is, how do you drink one then? Because you can't reseal that bottle, can you? I have a. Oh my god! I have this heavy mean? metal stopper, but is this metal stopper literally? It it was like a, a Christmas tree. 
like it's for like a holiday stopper and mm-hmm. my mom gave it to me a few years ago and it's like really cheap it's like it's like probably like a dollar stopper or something and i like just twisted the christmas tree off because it was like so big that it wouldn't fit in my fridge door right like it would just it would block the door yeah. from closing so i was like okay i, I twisted that off but the the remaining metal part is pretty heavy so if you stick that in a champagne bottle it'll actually keep those bubbles fresh for two or three days it's great so like wow. yeah i will i'll i'll get one of those seven dollar bottles from costco and uh pour a drink out and so this is the other important thing to me to know are you pulling out a champagne flute every time you drink champagne no we have uh we have we do have some champagne flutes but we have the uh stemless glasses which are gotcha. all the all like the rage wine glasses. yeah yeah, yeah. I, that's like what everybody has now everyone has stemless because a stemmed wine glass is just a pain in everyone's ass a martini glass <laughs> a stemmed Wine glass, the worst designs in the history no, of glassware. That's that's why the stemless is in. So, yeah, we got yeah. that. So I just use that. I've been drinking wine out of whiskey glasses because I think it's like – I mean, especially my uh, – probably my favorite wine. And yeah. I do I do like good red wine, but my favorite wine is the uh, Snoop Dogg Cali Red. <laughs> it's so fucking good. We'll do an episode. Do you drink red wine? I don't drink – I really don't drink that much red wine. I okay. will drink it, but okay. to me it's like IPAs. Which I know at some point you're going to yeah. force me to drink. That's also, by they, the way, we have a segment coming, folks. <laughs> that's going to be me trying to get. I've a, I have a pretty good track record. My wife, when I started dating her, uh, Coronitas, which not she wouldn't even go for a full Corona. She needed the seven <laughs> the ounce small, bottle small. of. Yeah, my my the mother-in-law. Juice box size. Yes, my mother-in-law was like a like a blue moon. She'd be like, "That's like a heavy, crazy beer." Oh God, what a terrible beer! It's a bad beer. It's very bad. Um, but. They're both like double IPAs, as hoppy as you can go. Yeah. It's not that I think – I don't think you're going to like every IPA. I think that's the thing. I'm not – no, I will like no IPA. I, I don't <laughs> think that's true. I think we'll get you. I think we'll get you because they're very different from each other. Uh, no, that I, look, people who like IPAs – Have you ever liked orange juice in your life? Yeah, I love orange juice. Okay, I we're going to get you then. It's over. It's yeah, the fucking no, – it's over. You're going to be an IPA guy. It's To me, it's the bitterness, really. Sure. It's, we'll get you there. IPAs, worry. red wine, people who really like them, like, I get it. I understand why you do. It's just the taste, for whatever reason, they don't resonate with me. Like, uh, just any red wine, people will be like, this is a great red wine. I don't mm-hmm. feel like it tastes like the shitty red wine you just gave me. But, oh, yeah. But with whiskey, I mean, we sit here and drink the whiskey. And so, like, I, I, I can empathize mm-hmm. with the red wine and IPA people. But uh, it's just not my speed. This is more my speed. Yeah. I I uh, I don't really like super bitter IPAs either. Yeah. So it's not, it's not it. So I think, but I love IPAs. It's my yeah. favorite style of beer. We'll figure it out. We'll yeah. get, we'll get a, we were going to do it on the first one and then I forgot. Yeah. And then that's I found okay. out you like whiskey, which is, was a nice surprise. Yeah, that's so. much better. We can forget about the IPA. <laughs> you can just, feed me, just feed me the whiskey. <laughs> um, the one thing I will say is being a father while I forgot, I was making sure that door is closed just because <laughs> not even because we're going to say anything crazy. She's been, exp- we, this is the clip from last week. She's been exposed to a lot of horrible shit. I just don't want her to wake up. Go to fucking sleep, kid. Um, And you've come, we've started this podcast. Both women that live in my house have been asleep both times you've arrived. Yeah, I don't know that there's actually anyone who lives here with you. You might live alone. I have no idea. As far as you know, I'm Boo Radley and I've been divorced for five years. (laughs) That explains why you have the porn stars over here to rent mm -hmm. out the room on the weekends. Gotta pay the mortgage somehow. (laughs) Uh you know, you can't. You would not believe what's been done in that chair. Oh, I would. And I what would. that who who that chair has been in? Let me tell you. That's why I'm bringing the black lamp. <laughs> check this place out first, and maybe like uh, some rags, cleaning rags. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, some uh, some uh, gasoline and a couple matches. Really clean this place up. Um, yeah, I was like, it's funny because you're you're like as a parent, you're like in between. Like I gotta. I'm like trying to be a good dad. Also, like, can you shut the fuck up? I'm trying. Like, the most exciting game in years is on. Like, this is a very good Super Bowl, in my opinion. You could. It was. Yeah, yeah. it was very entertaining. Yeah, I would agree that it was. Uh, you know, as far as Super Bowls go, it was one of the more entertaining ones we've had in the past few years. It's like they didn't have to do. I feel like every year you get to a point in the game where they just start talking about random shit. Like I remember a couple of years ago when the Patriots were in it, and Matt Patricia had just been hired to be the Lions' head coach, mm-hmm. but he was still coaching the Patriots on the sideline. 
they just could not shut up about how Matt Patricia was about to be the Detroit Lions head coach. Like, and that turned out to be amazing for the Lions. So I'm glad they devoted all that great time hire. to it. Yeah, it's good yeah. to have that in the annals of, yeah. uh, like of a, announcing I just, archives. I distinctly or... remember they just kept calling it out because like, the game wasn't exciting enough to like <laughs> say anything else. He, uh, <laughs> I thought he was going to be good too, by the way. I, there's something about a guy with a beard that really, really uh, yeah. makes me believe in him. He looks like he works hard, so. Yeah, he looks like he works hard at like a, <laughs> driving a forklift or something yeah. like that. I think he shaved, right? This is. I don't know. Okay. I think I, he shaved. I have no idea. I um, kept up on my map. I know he like called, didn't he call the offense this year? The, yeah, be, the Patriots made him their offensive coordinator and went terribly. Terribly, just a colossal disaster. Yeah, hold on, I gotta check my now. I've now I've uh, given myself anxiety over my daughter. Oh, yeah, I have that like uh, the we'll get the don't hack into my you're gonna see me look at the camera, folks. Don't uh, don't hack into the mainframe. You got the baby watching app? Yeah, we have a we have a camera in our room. This is this is really what modern day parenting looks like. It's just making it's, sure you have the right apps and the right cameras set up, and you're good. Yes. And uh, recording a podcast, drinking whiskey huh? after the kid goes to sleep. You yeah, know? I, I mean, I've seen uh, I've seen some funny clips with my niece, and there's definitely one where she was just in her room, just pounding her head against the wall <laughs> when she was supposed to be sleeping. Literally pounding her head against the wall when she was supposed to be sleeping. That was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it is rough to be the only person in your house that's interested in actually watching the game. I'll say that. That is tough, yeah. Because that's that's not the case in my household. We both yes. want to watch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My my wife has limited interest. She was interested in uh, the commercials. Like, that's the cliche. Of course. Halftime show. I love the commercials, cliche. too, so I get it. Yeah. So I, but I always have, every year except for this year, I basically see none of the commercials because I'm like, cooking shit i got like a you know eight yeah. pots on the stove of and course. fucking cauldron in the backyard and yeah. you know there's too much going on to really like when the when the game's not on i'm doing other shit getting people drinks and stuff this year was pretty subdued so i actually saw some commercials the one that everyone's talking about is the Tubi commercial yeah fuck you guys did you so did you so <laughs> this is this is how i don't think anyone else was in the room when i when it happened, uh, yeah, you definitely needed somebody else in the room. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. turn my headphones up. Would you like your headphones higher at all? Uh, sure. Yeah, a little bit. Are these yours? That's perfect. All right. Uh, yeah, that commercial threw everybody off. Yeah. It, that's that's when you know it's a good commercial. It was stupid. <laughs> it was just, yeah. But they tricked you into thinking that you. I mean, how often are you sitting there watching TV when somebody hits the remote and you switch to a different streaming service? Dude, you know? I know. I, do I know. It all the time. My, all if time. my daughter could run the remote, I'd be fighting her for. She'd be putting Bluey on every fucking eight minutes. <laughs> um, did, were there any? What was the other one? There was the the weird one with Maya Rudolph. I remember the like. Oh, the M M&M M one. Yeah, that was wacky. Ribbon. That was, yeah, it was like that was one that I didn't catch the whole thing. I just like it was like on in the background, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah, there just weren't like I mean, every year you get they they seem to set a really high bar, but yeah, they just weren't that good this year. Like there weren't any ads that just blew you away. Really, the one I thought was a pretty good idea, but I don't. Th- I'm like I'm not sure if I want to give it credit for being fully a good commercial. I thought the Mr. Peanut roast was pretty good in concept. I hate the fact that they're like, go follow this QR code so we don't have to spend more money on ads and show you more roast jokes. Like yeah, if that would have just been four commercials with different roast jokes every time and they got like progressively meaner or different roasters. <laughs> yeah, they should have gone way overboard. But yeah. It, you're right. It was a good idea, but the execution was terrible. It was like completely unfunny. And they had like good people. They had like funny comics. Like Jeff Ross was... Yeah, the, the, host, ro- the roast master. Yeah, as he tends uh, to be. Uh, Natasha Leggero, who's like a classic yeah. roast comic. There were other comics on there. Yeah, I and think they, uh, they wasted their talents. It felt like. What's a, it? Actually, it's fu- funny too. I, that, my wonder is always: Do I like this because I'm a comic? And I look yeah. at that and I'm like, Yamanika Saunders is on there, who's not even a comic that I think everybody. She's actually like huge and doing great. Yeah. But I don't think everybody knows who that is. Jeff Ross, Natasha Leggero are on a whole bunch of stuff. Yamanika yeah. Saunders is very funny but not incredibly not that level of fame yet yeah yeah. um and i was like oh that's that's like this is like a great idea i the idea of anyone standing up to a tv and scanning the qr code makes me want to throw a remote (laughs) at their head dude has anything ever come back like the qr code remember like a decade ago when they were like a punchline because they came out 
I don't know, 15 years ago, and they were kind of useful for a little while. Like, that's they, they kind of corresponded with like the first camera phones, right? Like, you sure. get a camera phone, you want to do everything that it can possibly do. So, you see a stupid code, of course, you're going to, because yeah. you have the, the technology to do it now. But then we quickly realized they meant nothing. Yep. Nothing. And then in the last few years, they've just, they really came. I think the pandemic. Well, they, really they were them. they were how every menu was. They're also I now as a comic, I have a card that I bring that's yeah. like uh, it just has a QR code on the back that goes yeah. to like a link Pornhub tree. Or? Yeah, it goes to my favorite videos. It's, I have a playlist. <laughs> it's like a whole thing. I try to get a lot of subscribers on the playlist. I get it. It's like Gene's picks on Seinfeld. Uh, are you Seinfeld enough of a I, guy? To, I I do know Seinfeld, but I don't remember. You don't. The picks. Gene's picks doesn't doesn't resonate. There's no. an episode where Elaine is going to the movie store. Yeah, and a guy is uh gene okay yeah, is making yeah. picks and they're like specifically they're like flirting yeah. through his picks yeah and then she finds out he's like a 16 year old boy that worked, <laughs> worked there um anyway uh yeah but it's like there i would never i've never intentionally unless i'm like at a place that's like our menus on the qr code yeah i've never used the qr code because i've been like wow i'm really interested in what yeah it's worse it's definitely worse like the restaurants that are still doing qr code menus like get your shit together man it's time yeah bring back the paper menu like if you put a pa piece of paper in front of me that has everything i can possibly order i'm not going to get on my phone because it just it's just a pain in the ass i did enjoy and i i, I say this without considering all the societal implications but i did enjoy <laughs> that's, pretty much every, that's like the disclaimer that should go before this <laughs> yes. entire podcast we, we weren't thinking about anyone but ourselves there was when no we said society all these considered when yeah. we started talking when that like sometimes they'll be it'll be like not only the qr code menu but like it's yeah. some app that you can order from oh yeah and the then you don't app. have to talk to a like a waitress or a waiter a that server. part's valuable yes yeah. yes that part's valuable i will the other thing i will say uh for whatever reason i go to red robin enough that i know this uh which I'm not trying to brag or anything. Oh, this guy has fucking Red Robin on a regular basis, honey. <laughs> but Red Robin's got those little electronic kiosks, which a lot of like mid-level family style yeah. restaurants have now. Those kiosks are nice because how often do you see your server at Red Robin? They give you your menu and they greet you and then like they never appear again. So if you have that electronic kiosk, you're like, yes, reorder more fries. Yeah. Yes, reorder more drinks. My person was never going to come back and get get my order again. Yeah, well, it's you get to do it. it. Everything becomes on your terms, which is better for the customer always, right? Oh, it's no absolutely. longer a capacity issue. Um, I have noticed, I go to, I do road comedy, which is the excuse for a lot of bad behavior. <laughs> uh, I, when I'm driving through like Cleelum, I trust a McDonald's more than a mom and pop place. Yeah, yeah. Those small town mom and pop places are volatile. Yes. Some are really good. Some if I, are great. I, I said this on a, I recently did, Kev, you know who Kevin Pelton is? Yes. He does a, he has a podcast called Talk and Taco Time, and I did the Talk and Taco Time podcast. Nice. I've heard, I read about this podcast the other day. I, oh, really? Actually, I knew you were on it because it was mentioned in, I think it was mentioned in the article. Oh, there was like a there was an article. It about was it, it was one of the it was one of those Seattle publications, you know, one of the. But it was yeah. a long article. It was actually a pretty good article. Nice. Yeah. The uh, they I was talking to them about this, but you uh, about the fact that I get a uh, McDonald's way more than I should. Mm -hmm. But there's nobody that is rightfully less interested in good customer service than a person at the behind the counter of a McDonald's. In fact, oh, yeah. if you ever meet someone who is at a fast food restaurant and they're like kicking ass you should hire that person away from there yeah at the very least write uh a comment to yes. their employer that they no, were good. we don't want them to stay there longer that's yeah. the thing we want these people <laughs> in fucking corporate jobs yeah you need to you need, we need like a, a mcdonald's to fortune 500 pipeline okay <laughs> I've, i always used to say this about uh like restaurant chefs too like they bust ass they're process oriented they don't need any money, and as, if you can find one that can pass a piss test, yeah. that person's as good as gold. Like yeah. that's going to be a great worker everywhere. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it, man. I uh, I don't know if you've been to a Popeyes lately, but oh, I my love God, Popeyes. there is. You might think McDonald's customer service is iffy. Popeyes does not give a shit. Yes, they don't. They don't care how they treat you. If you get your actual order in its entirety, then you've won that day. Yeah. Because Popeyes does not care. I've taken two anytime I get Popeyes because the I'm a the Popeyes chicken sandwich is the best fast food item in the history of it's pretty fast good. food. In my it's pretty opinion. good. It's, it's better than Chick Fil A. But, oh, but crushes Chick, Chick, Chick Fil A is so nice though. The people there are the so people nice. are nice. The, gotcha. Yeah, when you get there and you pull up into the drive-through, they say something like, 
it's another great day here at Chick-fil-A. Interesting. So th- one of those things that, like, if someone said it to you at work, you would, like, kill yourself. Yes, or them. It, yeah, or, yeah. So you definitely rage. Somebody was dying that day. But at, when you're at Chick-fil-A, you're like, that's reassuring. That's Thank interesting. <laughs> I, uh, I... The, I agree on Popeyes, and what I the tact I have taken is I will now only order Popeyes through like DoorDash or Uber Eats. Interesting, because if they fuck up your order, you get a refund. That's smart. Yeah, but That's you smart. you pay a premium for this. You pay a couple extra bucks. It gets delivered to your house, whatever. <laughs> when but, they first started adding fast food places to those delivery service, I was like, this is never going to work. Who <laughs> wants who wants cold McDonald's? I've who, met the man. Who's going to pay twenty dollars <laughs> for a Chick Fil or for a Popeyes chicken sandwich? Uh, uh, I got, no, the, the, okay, this is, it gets worse. This is the most embarrassing thing I think I've ever. This, I mean, it's not the most embarrassing thing I've ever done, but in recent memory, uh, within the last year, at some point, my wife had taken. Our, we have two cars, but her car is stick shift, and I can't drive stick. Which oh my god, take 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 all my man cars. Do you need some fucking ginger ale for this whiskey? That'd be great, actually, if we could cut this <laughs> a little bit. Um, so she had taken my car that day somewhere, so I couldn't drive anywhere. But I forgot. A lot of times when this this has happened before, and I forget that the, my car is gone. You know, okay. and I'm like, I wake up and I'm doing whatever, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go get lunch now, and I walk out the door, and there's no car there, and I'm like, oh no. And I was hungry, but I, I don't know why. I It must have been like there was some deal or something, but I had door dashed 7-Eleven. Not actual food. It was like I just wanted like a soda and some chips. Ooh. <laughs> that's rough. Without <laughs> without bad, alcohol man. to blame for that, that's bad. bad. This is the middle of the day. It was bad. I was Even as I was, as I was doing it and the, after I was doing it, I felt guilty. Let me ask you this because this is something – I'm afflicted with this. I like a discount. I don't like to pay full price. Yeah. I hate paying fees for stuff that I don't get anything out of, yeah, right? I get it. So yeah. whenever I order from DoorDash or Uber Eats, I just it's like 12 bucks or more. You don't get the, the small bag fee. Okay. <laughs> and so I will just make sure, even if I'm not going to eat it all, I just hate the idea of them getting, of DoorDash getting $2.50 extra yeah. when I could be giving that money, some part of, part of it to fucking Popeyes or that sounds, the, that's the altruistic way to <laughs> describe it. The real, the reality is when I could be stuffing it in my fucking face. Um, <laughs> did you, did you meet the, did you like reach a minimum at any point with, cause chips and soda are going to yeah, get you yeah. not to like what no, six the, bucks. The value was not there for sure. I think I ended up ordering like double of everything. You start because <laughs> because, <laughs> because perfect, I was <laughs> that's the perfect exactly what I was hoping yeah, for. Because I was like, I have to get to this point where the value becomes worth it. Yes. Where all these additional fees and costs become worth it. But again, there was some sort of deal that prompted me to do this. It was one of those things where I like went onto the app and you know, this will happen sometimes. I very rarely use food delivery services at all. Like I'm the type of person that wants to go run the errand. Like I want to leave the house and come back. Gotcha. So to not be able to do that this day, like obviously messed with my mind and I ordered from 7-Eleven, but something prompted me to do it. And uh, yeah, I just got like two of everything and I was like, all right, now the uh, the the access it all the supply and demand the economics of it all works out now the, the value proposition was good finally. yeah wow. finally it, but yeah you can't just like be like yeah I want a soda from Seven Eleven bring it to me that won't work well you can it just costs fifteen bucks <laughs> or you could for fifteen system. bucks get eight sodas or what yeah it's yeah it's tough that's uh that that's very funny I do I do that too where I'm like. I, I'll just order some like chicken, uh, those like chicken nuggets at yeah. uh, at Popeyes. Yeah. Because that'll fill out, that'll get me to the $12 minimum. And then I'm like, I won't eat them though. I'll just, you know, I'll eat a couple and throw them away. <laughs> yeah, right. And I fucking, the only thing I don't eat is like the crumbs on the bottom of the, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm really restricting myself. Yeah, I mean, myself. the only thing worse than uh, having delivery Popeyes is having reheated delivery Popeyes. So yeah. <laughs> Is there a fast food that like even works reheated? I mean, if you if you consider pizza fast food, sure. Yeah. But I don't consider pizza fast food. It's not fast. It does get delivered. Yeah. But like, if you sit down at a pizza place and get a pizza cooked for you, it's not fast. Right. No, it's never fast. Uh, unless it's yeah, Little Caesars. But that's Little Caesars is fast food. <laughs> I've had I've had next day Little Caesars before. I think I see sparks not coming great. off the pizza. It's yeah, like it's, got, not great. it's got like heavy yeah. metals in it. It's the kind of thing that if you had like. Little Caesars in the fridge from the day before, and someone broke into your house at that moment, and you took out a slice of pizza and chucked it at them. It would kill them. 
<laughs> yeah. on impact and then everything would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, but no, you're right. Pizza doesn't really count. Man, I, there are not too many like French fries. It's just never going to work. It'll it's never always work. bad. It's always bad. Don't do that. I would even argue that pizza isn't great unless you go through painstaking processes. Like what I have to, what I do to make it acceptable is I heat up a cast iron pan to like low medium and then you're like, I could have just fucking baked the whole pizza at this point. I'll tell you a pizza reheat trick in just a second, but I will say that I'm a cold pizza person. Okay. I don't, I don't heat it back up. I actually like it cold. I think it's pretty good. How picky are you about the pizza in its like, in its uh, original state? Like how how much do you care about? Like crust crispiness, cheese integrity. I like New York pizza, so like you know you're getting just a sloppy piece of shit. Now, see that's the mis- that's the misconception. <laughs> New York pizza should have crispy crust, and uh, one day Alex will fucking there's salamonies in Tacoma, Washington. I've had salamonies. That's very good. Uh, yeah. there, for another good Tacoma spot, that's kind of people don't know about that much. Camp Colvos Brewing. I actually have not had their pizza. It's I can't amazing. Talk shit about it. Okay. it is amazing. I, and is it's it New better, York style? It's better than Salamonies. Ooh, uh, boy, it is, is it New York, York style. It is right, New York right. style. Another good yeah. place, E9 Brewing, yeah. the one down yeah. in uh, downtown. Very good pizza. They're good. Yeah. Uh, no, um, the pizza trick is to reheat. I've heard people talk about this. Well, you've never done it. You're fucking just. I've never me done your, it. Your... This is a secondhand, secondhand no, wisdom. I don't, I don't like this. But you take your pizza slice and you put it crust first into a toaster. Crust first, so then it all slides. So the crust is on the bottom. The triangle, oh, the point you. of the I triangle, see, is see, up okay. top. And then if you put it in your toaster that way, it's just heating itself. Although it just, it doesn't seem right. But it people seems like s- the ingredients would fall down into your toaster. There is the possibility. It depends what your slice of pizza is built like, I imagine. Yeah. But I guess if you had, yeah, if you had like a toaster oven, that's that's probably the one time you really want a toaster oven. Right. I've uh, I've gone team toaster oven on toast. We I had so oh, many yeah. times where I burnt toast that we bought like a a way too expensive toaster oven yeah. that it senses the internal temperature and modifies the cook time based on the internal temp. Like if it's if you're doing a second batch of toast, yeah, it does it shorter to get the same results. Interesting. Yeah, it's. I grew up with a toaster oven, so gotcha. my, Me too. My, my family home toaster oven. So I didn't know any different yeah. except for. When you watch TV, everyone's got a normal toaster, like yeah. Pop Tarts commercials. You want the satisfying ding and the yeah, pop up. Yeah, it's it's, but it's never that satisfying. It barely like creeps up out of there. Yeah, and what you what <laughs> what they don't show you is that three quarters of those Pop Tarts come out as fucking briquettes. Yeah, I don't. I, I basically gave up heating Pop Tarts because it was just. Uh, did uh, do you heat your Pop Tarts or do you go raw dog? I uh, we've used this. I almost used raw dog. We did. I think we used raw dog either off the podcast or right at the beginning on what might not be part of it. And then that's you second time raw dog. I that could have been the third time because I almost said yeah. uh, raw dogging your pizza into the something. I was no raw dogging your pizza theory um, <laughs> without testing it yourself. Uh, Pop Tarts. My move. I get unfrosted. I do toast them. Wow. Unfrosted? And then I put so much goddamn butter on top of an unfrosted strawberry. Interesting. It's great. It's got sweet and salty, baby. That's like the that's the I can see the benefit of doing it that way. But they're not, by the way, they're more carbs in an unfrosted one than in a frosted one. There's no health benefit. Interesting. It's yeah. all flavor preference. No, I, I can see that. That that makes sense. You're you're the one person keeping the unfrosted pop tart business. My, alive. Yeah, my uh, <laughs> I, I I passed down to my mom from my mom. She was yeah. the, she kept them alive in the yeah. '70s and '80s, and I got the '90s to now. My wife also has uh, adopted this. Um, we should probably at some point talk about the actual Super Bowl <laughs> game. I suppose. Great uh, game. Yeah, I was like, good one. All Great right, great game. Boom. Bad ending. <laughs> great game though. Uh, I w- I do respect the dude, the Eagles defensive back, saying like, "Yeah, I held him." Yeah, he knew he held. I mean, like when you commit a penalty in sports, no matter the sport, you know what you did. Like he was trying, he was actively trying to hold him. Like you yeah. can see it. Like he, mo- the, the receiver more or less escaped his grasp, which is kind of why it was like a ticky tack call. But he was actively trying to grab him and hold him. I think that was like very much a timing pass. It looked like though. Yeah. And so I do think there's it's possible that he fucked his timing up to the point that it was that off target. It's possible. I certainly. It would also suck if you're a Chiefs fan 
and the game got decided on a non-call kind of, right? Like that right. pass that could have been a touchdown. Right. It's just really unfortunate. And I, I don't know. It's like you wanted to see the Eagles have a real shot at a game. I mean, I didn't because I had a bunch of money on the on the Chiefs, so I, my <laughs> preference was a uh, – I loved the way it ended yeah, uh, for my for own you. heartbeat, yeah. but uh, heart rate, but the – um, that's like the the Seahawks victory yeah. was one of the worst Super Bowls to watch, yeah. except for for Seahawks fans. Yeah, it was great for us. I mean, it was like you could just party by halftime. Yes. Yeah. No, I I, I get what you're saying. I mean, it was. I think the Chiefs were going to kick a field goal there no matter what. So sure. It really was just a matter of how much time could they burn off the clock, and getting that penalty call allowed them to basically expire time and then kick the field goal as opposed to having to kick it with, I don't know, a minute and a half left, and then they give the ball back. So they're probably winning the game anyway. Sure. But the fashion in which they won it, it feels like, as a viewer who has no horse in the race, something was taken well, from you. Well, I think that Philadelphia would have gotten the ball back with, like, like a minute and a half yeah left enough time like. enough time to like make it interesting right possibly tie it with yeah. i think two timeouts yeah there, there's i mean there's a very good chance they could have marched down the field tied it up or even won the game i mean that's totally possible i mean i feel like we just see that every week so much in the nfl that it's like i would yeah. almost put it as i i would be, i would have been interested to see what like the win probability percentage was do you when uh when uh what was the play that um oh the big the Dallas Goddard. By the way, there was another that Dallas Goddard throw that they yeah. that the Chiefs reviewed. Yeah, one of the great catches in Super Bowl history. Yeah, there's a catch that well, I think gets maybe. questionable catch. Sure, sure. <laughs> that well, I thought I actually thought like they did. I thought the Devonta uh, Smith. Uh, Devonte Devon Devonte. Devonte. But I, in in our house we call him Devonta. Gotcha. Just, but that's just for fun. I like a Slim <laughs> Reaper. It's pretty sweet. That's, He's very skinny. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard people call him that. Um, he, that catch was like the spirit of a catch. It was yeah. a catch. I do think they got the call right. Yeah. I think they got the Dallas Goddard one right, personally. Yeah. I would agree. I think they got him most of those calls right. I think the, the true nature of how tough a call is, is when like you're scrolling through social media and half the people are mad that it went one way and half the people are mad that it went the other. And they don't have the obviously the team in their bio or right. or profile like, picture. Like if 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 fifty fifty, like half I mean, I've heard a lot of people just today be like, It was a catch. It wasn't a catch. And right. it's like if if this many people are that incensed about it on both sides, that just goes to show you like how tough of a call this was. I mean, it is the true definition of a bang bang. Yeah. And it's like even when you took the time to slow it down and review a call for five minutes and it's you, no one can still come to a consensus. Yeah then you're not going to win. I mean, that's a no-win situation at that point. It's like, I blame Dallas Goddard for not just catching the ball. Just catch the damn ball. You bastard. Why'd you have to bobble it? Look what you did, man. And so now we're here talking about the refs again. So. I'm going to I'm gonna pull up this catch, this uh, Julio Jones catch, because this gets lost in, there's like the amazing Julian Edelman catch, which is like just improbable. Yeah. I think this is going to be the catch, and it's just such an insane... Okay, yes. So he catches it, and not only he's at his full extension, yeah. to get two feet in is insane. Yeah. You can only put that ball in that one spot, and what the fuck is this? He did it. Yeah. And so this gets lost in the other heroic plays made in this Super Bowl, and the fact that the, the Falcons lost. Oh, this is the 27-3. Uh, to Falcons 20, blow 28 it. three, yeah, 28 they, three, yeah. yeah, they. But look at this. I mean, it's like it's. Oh yeah, it's just. I, I I've always thought that play got underrated, and that Dallas Goddard the throw and catch combination, the unlikely that yeah. how unlikely it was at every stage was similar. Also, third and fourteen, you yeah, throw same sideline. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was it was a, I mean it was a really good play and. Uh, <laughs> obviously controversial yeah i think yeah i mean i i, I guess the dallas got i mean the dallas got it one now like nobody's got to care about because it's no it's lost in the shelf i mean there's really only like two things people will remember from that super bowl it's i mean obviously both quarterbacks played really well but it's going to be that penalty at the end and 
the Jalen Hurts fumble. Those are like the two plays that people will always think about when they think about that particular game. And the and the difference in the game, really, if you want to like get down to it, is the Jalen Hurts fumble. If he doesn't fumble that ball and turn it into a Chiefs touchdown, then they win the game just based on the virtue of the score at the end. You know, that yeah. was a, a it was seven of course, points. Things swing, don't happen in a vacuum, and it's going to change the whole you know the whole strategy of the game. Right. Um, it's kind of unfortunate that Jalen Hurts couldn't be the MVP of that game. He was very obviously he played the best of anybody on that field. He's really good. I never thought he'd be this good. Uh, he's become a good court. I mean, he he's a very good quarterback, amazing athlete. He can run. You never know like how long it's going to last with guys like that. Yeah. You know, running quarterbacks. It's just it seems like he's become a really good passer this year. So you know maybe they do like what the Seahawks once did with Russell Wilson and like kind of keep him from running as much in the future but right now he's just such a weapon with his legs that you have to you have to let him run the thing about that is and I think people will start making that comparison with him and Lamar Jackson is when Russell Wilson came out he was considered they everyone said on arm talent if this dude was 6'2 he'd be the number one pick in the draft no question he'd be picked over Andrew Luck yeah and because he's 5'10 he wasn't and nobody said that about Jalen Hurts yeah. Nobody said that. I mean, they thought I remember Jalen Hurts they thought was gonna be a wildcat guy and yeah. Lamar Jackson they thought was gonna be a receiver. Yeah. I mean I watched Jalen Hurts play a lot in college and he sucked throwing the football. Right. <laughs> he got benched terrible, in the championship game. He was a terrible rightful, like, rightfully. Yeah. He they, like Nick Saban made the right call. I mean he was a he was a true game manager in college because Alabama, the sur- the supporting cast was so good that you could just let Jalen Hurts go out there and either hand the ball off or throw these little screen passes all day long, and you were still going to beat your opponent by three scores at least. You know, yeah. like that's just what was going to happen. And to to see that guy get to the NFL and actually flourish as a passer is like that's just that doesn't usually happen. Yeah, it doesn't usually happen in football. You to be an MVP that. candidate. Yeah, I mean, he is. And to and, duel very closely the MVP. Yeah, I mean, the difference, really, it's it's kind of poetic in a way that the difference in that game is Hurts' fumble because really when it comes down to Peer it, like. Peer pressure is yeah. happening right now. <laughs> Seven years. Slo- slowly I'll just get you to drink a little more on each of these podcasts and then we'll be <laughs> after you'll have a real problem. Once again, your seven years will turn into seven years in prison. Uh, at no, I will say for the record, at no point have I ever been sober. So. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, the difference in that game, the difference you see with a guy like Jalen Hurts, who's a very talented quarterback, versus a guy like Patrick Mahomes, who's, you know, at this point probably one of the top five greatest quarterbacks ever, Yeah, is the flawlessness that a guy like Mahomes plays the game. Like, he's not – all like, not every play is going to wow you. Like, there were so many times where Jalen Hurts, his play would wow you. And, like, another good example of a quarterback like that is Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray is a guy that, like, when you watch him play, he will show up on top plays on ESPN by the end of the night. Like, he's a highlight reel. But what separates him from the great quarterbacks is, like, their attention to detail and execution. Mm-hmm. Like, Patrick Mahomes does not fuck up. Tom Brady does not fuck up. Like, that's – they do every now and then, but it yeah. not it, it never really bites them. And in the big games, they don't screw up. For Jalen Hurts to just fumble the football in a situation where no one hits him, he just right. drops the football, like – that's not what the great quarterbacks do. And that's probably the next step for him is like, hey, you got to like just clean up those little things and mm-hmm. then you'll be you'll be at that level. It sucks that it's like he now gets scrutinized as a Super Bowl loser. I've always said this about LeBron. Yeah. I think it's true yeah. of Brady, the the like arguments. I saw um fuck, who was the guy? Uh someone said like is Tom Brady the best? Well, he's not the best regular season quarterback, and he's not the best Super Bowl quarterback. And I'm like, okay, that's if you penalize him for bringing shitty teams to the Super Bowl. That's like LeBron. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, LeBron, you know, Michael Jordan's undefeated in the finals. It's like, yeah, because he didn't get to the finals when he had dog shit teams. Yeah. You're just mad because LeBron bought a bu- yeah. brought a bunch of fucking bums to the to the finals every year and also like i mean he's annoying in a bunch of ways but like the <laughs> he and and uh, some of that team building stuff you can't even obviously take off of his yeah. plate cuz he's a, he has such a hand in how the team gets built but it's uh yeah i mean jalen hurts it sucks that his career now is like he's got to like we're even talking about a guy cleaning things up yeah. where it's like if if he didn't make it there and lose on that stage yeah if this if Trey Lance was healthy. He goes to the Super Bowl, does those things. We're not thinking those things about Jalen Hurts. We're yeah. saying them about Trey Lance, right? Yeah. And uh, it's like it's like the 
we penalize someone for coming in second sometimes more than for coming in 19th. Dude, I've been in the same fantasy football league for almost 20 years. I've been to uh, four championships, and I've lost all four. So You're trust the Buffalo me, Bills of that league. I literally, it's a punchline at this point, so I know exactly what you mean. Once you get labeled like you get labeled as a loser, even though you made it as far as you possibly could go before yep. losing. It's an unfortunate uh, – it's like, uh, you know, people always used to talk about uh, Carl Malone and John Stockton never winning a championship, and it's – you know, it's really just because they were in the era of Michael Jordan. Like that's yeah. that's the thing that really cost them is they just could never get yeah. over that hump with well, those, like that. that they a lot of people think that ninety five ninety six Sonics team is like a top twenty team ever. They just were playing against like a top five or the yeah. top team in the history of basketball. It's always tough when that happens when there's not like a runaway, not a runaway winner that just dominates teams. I mean, I guess in that case there was. It was the Chicago Bulls, but. You well, know. but not, but not. Oh, yeah, that year there was, but and then like even the years before that, it's like the the they lose to Denver in the first ever one eight. Yeah, <laughs> knockout. I mean, the most unlikely. Yeah, the I Rockets win both those those finals that that the that, that yeah. Michael's. The Rockets don't get enough credit for like building a super team during that era. Sure, like, they definitely built a super team because that's 90s. like what it was. Cassell, Elijah, on Drexler was. Ori was on those teams, I believe. Yeah, and then like later young... on they they added uh they added Charles Barkley like in '95, yeah. and it's like they had they were stacked. Yeah. No, like people always talk about those two Rockets teams like they were just forgettable because Michael Jordan wasn't in the NBA, right. which is true. I mean, in a lot of ways, it's like well, the best player on the planet wasn't playing at that time because he took a break, which is. But I don't know that he would have necessarily beat those teams. Those might have been teams that were equipped to actually beat him. Well, it's also. The other thing people forget is we talk a lot about Sam Bowie, but Hakeem, we don't talk about Hakeem Olajuwon getting picked before Michael Jordan because Hakeem Olajuwon was one of the best centers in the history of basketball. Yeah, I, I have a book that I read a long time ago now, probably like 10 years ago, that I found at a bookstore that was just strictly on that draft. Oh, man. The Jordan, the, the you know, it goes Olajuwon, then Bowie, then Jordan, and then a bunch of other random guys. There was actually like, it was a pretty good draft class. But it's fascinating to just read about how that all unfolds. I mean, Hakeem Olajuwon... Like in any other year, he's the a great number one pick, and he was he was a great number. He's a Hall of Fame basketball player. He's a great number one pick that year or any year. Yeah. It just so happens that the greatest player ever in most people's minds was the number. Well, he's the greatest player to the to the that point. Like oh, for sure, you didn't have an option to pick LeBron in that yeah. draft or whoever. Yeah, I mean it's just a different game. I mean back then everybody was just drafting centers, you know. I, so I want to talk about basketball in a little bit, but I want to sure. I want to cap off the Super Bowl thing. Do you think? Patrick Mahomes is actually injured because if you, I'm sure you've seen the conspiracy theories <laughs> yeah, that yeah. he's faking it. And what's interesting is like I get the gamesmanship thing, where maybe there's something you can yeah. gain from the other team thinking like they're not going to respect your ability to run. And we did see him like decide, uh, you know, a couple huge plays yeah. end up being Patrick Mahomes. I made a I made a comparison. There's been a lot of uh, comparisons made how yeah. Patrick Mahomes runs. I think this one's pretty good that I made on Twitter, which is uh, he runs like he's running through his living room and his kids left Legos on the floor. Uh, <laughs> like he doesn't. It's all like almost like he doesn't lift his feet. It's like real strange. Yeah, he runs weird. He definitely runs a little derpy, and he, he yeah. runs like he talks. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just very unexpected. Uh, no, I, I, you know, I think with any athlete. And not just pro athletes, but like if you're a person that is athletic your whole life and plays like real sports, organized sports, there's a difference. You see this with like people that did not grow up playing sports and people who did. Like there's just a difference in pain threshold when you are in like athletic competition like that. And I think yeah. to see like a guy like Patrick Mahomes is not faking his grimace in a game. Sure. Right? Like yesterday he gets, he gets, or Sunday he gets twisted up he goes limping off the field and you can see it in his face that he's in pain it's like if he was acting in that moment that's an oscar worthy performance and that's not going through your mind in the super bowl in the super bowl you're like i'm just here to win that the one it. caveat i will give you is soccer well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because those dudes are the highest level athletes and yeah. fake grimaces all the time i don't but, know what it is with soccer man i don't know it's a different beast <laughs> i uh I'm I'm kind of in your boat. I think I definitely think like I I played high school baseball and I uh would like throw a hundred pitches. And then it's like I remember my teachers, I'd come in the next day and I'd be like, I gotta like lift my arm onto the desk so I can write on a piece of paper, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And they'd be like, 
are you even, is that even like legal? And I'm like, it's like every, you know, you should see the next week's pitcher or whatever, yeah. the next game's pitcher. He's going to be just as fucked up or the yeah. other team's pitcher, I'm sure, is doing the same shit. Like yeah. the, um, yeah, and that's like, I mean, that's obviously like a, a very different yeah. uh, injury threshold or whatever than, than uh, Mahomes or than any NFL but, quarterback. But it's a good example. I mean, I, I remember growing up playing sports all the time. When you're playing, it doesn't hurt. It's when right. you, it's the next day or it's after you're done. Like when the adrenaline goes down and you stop, you're like, oh, that doesn't feel great. But when you're actually going through it, you just continue. Like that's just what you're used to doing. You just, yeah. you want to play, so you're going to keep playing. Like until someone has to literally like force you from playing you're just going to keep playing that's just what you do and yeah. and you you know it's different you think oh these guys are adults now like we we think of the if you're an adult you think of them as like your contemporary your peer but you got to remember like professional athletes are basically just grown up children i mean sure. they're just large children because they've just been funneled through this into like their entire lives have been funneled to this moment where they've just been guided by somebody else and all sure. they know all they know is that they keep playing until they physically cannot. Mm -hmm. That's really just how sports goes. So, yeah, I don't think uh, those conspiracy theorists are up there with the same people who think DeMar Hanlon's body double was there. Look at this guy <laughs> making a segue. It's always uh, makes, makes it a smooth segue when someone yells about it. So I, I included a couple of YouTube videos. I don't want to watch them because I don't want to give them like uh, – there's two conspiracies – that are giving me... <laughs> That's crazy. These are the craziest ones. So the DeMar Hamlin thing's interesting because people are like... I mean, obviously, and I, you know, we are, we are on YouTube, so I'm t terrified of using the V word and getting us into... But they think that the V word killed him. That the NFL... Vaginas. And, yes, vagina. the oh. vaginas killed DeMar Hamlin. <laughs> the government-issued vaginas killed De DeMar Hamlin. That he... Uh, a body double is now in his place. And like the movie Dave. What, well, my favorite one is, it's not just, the body double one is like, well, that's silly. But then you hear about like, you know, how many Saddam Hussein body doubles were there? How many fucking, yeah. there, there's, there is like, these are persistent theories. Like how many Bidens are there out there? Oh, they, they released the new Biden. Have <laughs> he's you seen those he's like the class hamster. Yeah. Like, I'm not dead. Yeah. He's still here. Yeah. The, um, yeah, it's Stewie six. Like the, we, we put our sixth <laughs> hamster with the same name. Uh, I, the one that gets me, and and this is like kind of brings back the fun conspiracy theories to yeah. me. Conspiracy theories used to be so fun and innocent. They were before the internet, especially. But yeah, I even remember in the like infancy of the internet. They are fine. It's crazy that you're like. I think for a long time I thought that we didn't land on the moon, and the Tupac <laughs> was still alive. And now what I'll tell you is, I don't think people uh, really want to accept whether or not. Like I think. There's like more attached to it. Yeah. It also always somehow turns around and ends up on the Jews somehow. It always is the Jews. Like somehow, like Tupac, his it's they gonna do, be the Jews' fault. They, every conspiracy theory, like if you go far enough down the rabbit hole, it just it all stems from like racism. Yes. That's basically what it is. It's like, or you know, just if religion or whatever. This somebody who hates somebody else, and you're like, okay, well that's yeah. not good. So the so the the. Tupac and the moon landing, in my opinion, were both uh, innocent enough. I think there's probably with the moon landing, you could get into some sort of like, um, uh, what's that shit called? Like international relations or whatever. Yeah. The, yeah. Like what? I mean, it's bad for whatever. <laughs> I don't. I actually like. I had an interesting conversation with my in-laws about it because I have no like. I wasn't born when it happened, so I don't. Yeah. I don't have any like emotional attachment <laughs> if to the moon you had landing. Been, I would. Yeah, I mean, it'd be wild. <laughs> it's the only age where you'd be like, wow, you look pretty good for 70. <laughs> uh, the, But, like, I'm not – they have, like, American pride attached to this. And I'm sure my parents do. I just don't yeah. – we don't have, yeah. the like, that kind of relationship the, where we talk I about. mean, look, I guess the one – Shout out to my mom recovering from the broken <laughs> leg, by the way. You're, I hope you're feeling better. I'm bringing you some chicken tomorrow. So. <laughs> like, back then – People just believed everything they saw on TV because what other truth did they have? Like, right. They just didn't have anything else that would question that. Yeah. I also, it's, I guess I don't, I never saw the harm and kind of, well, I kind of still don't see the harm. And like, if we tricked the Russians into thinking we landed on the moon, that's fucking awesome. Like, that would be pretty great. Yeah. yeah. They, have, they have no idea. <laughs> yeah. And then the Tupac one feels completely innocent. Like the, the, uh, and I, I'm not sure how far you've dug into that, but there's like, yeah. 
There's like a lot of stuff, like at least symbolism that like points to it. I don't think that it, I think he's dead. Okay, <laughs> I think he's dead. I mean, every generation has one. There was Elvis. You know, I, I mean, even growing up as a kid, you go to the supermarket. All the National Enquirer type magazines, yes. they always would talk about Elvis still being alive. Weekly and, World News. Yeah. Him and Bat Boy were yeah. hanging <laughs> <laughs> And our generation's Elvis was Tupac. Yeah. I don't know who the current generation has. There's probably some. I heard a rumor a few years ago about Avril Lavigne. That know, she's dead? She's dead, and uh, she had, like, a personal assistant or somebody that, like, killed oh, the, the theory is that that person, like, killed her. And then looked enough like her or like had some surgeries done to look like her to just take her place. It's like, this is very wild. <laughs> There's a Paul McCartney one. Have you, are you familiar with that? No. no God, not. it's like, uh, it's like, uh, oh, man, it's like Paul McCartney's dead and somebody took his spot. <laughs> and they looked enough like Paul. God, who, hold on. Yeah, let me, that, that's a common conspiracy theory at this point. I that Paul like. McCartney's dead? No, just anybody like they died and somebody took their spot and they've assumed like all all facets of their per- like the movie Dave. It's literally the plot. What of is the, the movie, movie Dave? Dave? You don't know the movie Dave? I oh, man, know. this is. Uh, I know the uh, FX. It's, um, uh, <laughs> have you seen that? No. That's very seen. good. Little Dicky. Uh, oh, yeah. Little Dicky. I know Little Dicky. Uh, Dave is a movie from like the mid '90s. It's a comedy kind of. It's starring Kevin Klein. Gotcha. And uh, the real president has a heart attack and dies while with a prostitute. And because it's like an election year or whatever, they just want to continue. They don't want the. They think the vice president is kind of a lame duck. So they find this guy played by Kevin Klein who looks gotcha. exactly like the current president, and he just replaces him. And does a better job, of course. So this is like literally what they think is happening with Biden all the time. Yeah. They're literally just, whether they've seen the movie Dave or not, they are just reciting the plot to the movie Dave. I can't remember who they think took, uh, who they think, it was like, maybe it was like, um, oh man, I, I don't care. There's some, there's like a famous singer they think took Paul McCartney's spot. And like okay. became Paul McCartney. Yeah. And he like that person died. Yeah. And they think that Paul McCartney actually died and they made this person the assume the role. Yeah. These um, are these are wild theories. Yes. It's the I'd like to see like that one to me again. It's like I have no feelings about the Beatles. Yeah. I would love it if that was true. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fucking awesome? It's I also mean, oh, it's because the other theory is it's like he's stayed young looking for so long. I think yeah. he's looks yeah. old now, but the no they should, gray, they no should, they mysterious should mysterious look into Rob Lowe if that's what they're if that's their criteria. Then if you, there's someone you should look into, it's Rob Lowe. He looks like he's 30 still, and he's like 70. Yeah, <laughs> that one. Yeah, that Tom is Cruise wild. would be another one. Man, I saw I was I saw Genie Bus when we were watching that Lakers game. I was just yeah. secretly like ogling Genie Bus. I was like, <laughs> isn't she old? I thought she was old, and you look her up, and she's 61, and you're like. Oh, that's it is the land of plastic surgery. It's a different ball game. Yeah. Sixty one when we were kids was your grandparents. Sixty one now, they're still trying they to be influencers. They look younger than thirty five year olds. They're still trying to be influencers. And I, think I respect she married that. or is engaged to Jay Moore, comedian Jay Moore. Oh, that's right. I saw that. Jay Moore has never destroyed any marriages, so that should go well. I, I watched the TV show uh, Las Vegas from the early 2000s, which has Nikki Cox as one of its uh, leads. Oh, wow. Yeah, Nikki Cox, who used to be married to Jay Moore. Mm-hmm. She's fallen on hard times. I blame Jay Moore. God damn it, Jay Moore. <laughs> All right. The other one was the uh, Arian Foster thing. And I'm going to pull that up because I think that'll oh, be. Yes. We'll watch as much of it as is interesting. Uh, let's see if we can get there. So, Arian Foster is um, a guy who. I'm going to, I'll, I'll pause this. Uh, Arian Foster was a running back, University of Tennessee, Houston Texans. I think, I don't think he played after the Texans, but maybe he played another couple of years. Maybe Miami. Did he play in Miami? He might have, yeah, he might have bounced around at the end. He was fantasy relevant for a few years. Yeah, he was, and he was, I, I think he's very, I remember really admiring him because he came out as a guy in playing football in Texas previously in Tennessee as a, as an atheist. Which doesn't sound yeah. that brave, and I was like, I I just assumed like I'm from Washington. This is like everyone's okay with atheists, and I was down. I was in Houston, yeah, and I was taking an Uber to a comedy show, and I was like talking to this dude who's uh, he's like uh, 
Uber driver, black dude, showing me all these HBCUs. We're having like this amazing conversation about society and the yeah. way Houston is, how it's different from Washington, all that stuff. And I go, man, the athlete that I respect the most from here is Arian Foster because in Texas he had the bravery to be an outspoken atheist. And he goes, fuck that dude. <laughs> He goes, we were like agreeing on so much stuff. I was learning about, you know, all the things that white people are supposed to do. I was doing. And uh, I say this nice thing about Arian Foster. He goes, fuck that dude. If you have that much talent, that's God that gives it to you. This is like, this reminds me of when, uh, I don't know if you remember this from the early 2000s, but, you know, over the years, many athletes have chosen not to stand for the anthem. It happens. It seems like it happens every couple of years. But the early 2000s, the guy was Carlos Delgado. The first baseman for the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't remember him not standing. It was brief, but it was a big deal when it happened. I remember talking about it with people, and this was like a big thing. But for a while there, he didn't want to stand for the anthem. And I was like, well, why the hell should he stand for the anthem? He's not from the U.S. Right. And he plays in Canada. If he doesn't want to stand for the anthem, then, I mean, like, everybody yeah. should have the right to not stand for the anthem if that's what they choose. Yes. But the fact that this guy really – you know, by all accounts, had no allegiance to the U.S. Well, yeah. like, well his employer is technically major league baseball. Is he from the Dominican Republic? I think he's he might be from Puerto Rico, which technically would be the U.S. But so even he could have then, beef. I mean, he could even have beef, <laughs> like legitimate beef with the U.S. Yeah. That's, we got we got to look this up. Yeah, Where's Carlos Delgado from? Either way, I was like, this is very questionable as to why you think he should stand. He was from Puerto Rico. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's a it's like a it's a U.S. territory that the U.S. <laughs> neglects. Like, <laughs> I, it's like, uh, why should this guy stand? It's like people get so up in arms about this stuff. It's like, is it hurting you? Right. Then don't freak out. Man. Yeah. Well, I've I mean, I've used a lot of uh, vocal cord mileage on on Colin Kaepernick. But uh, what a shame. Like, what a shame. I don't you know. The, the thing is, like, that dude's probably like a mid tier starter if he comes back. You know, he's yeah. like not not there was. It's not like insane to me that he wouldn't be given. A uh, twenty million dollar a year contract at the time. I mean, now he'd probably get a twenty million dollar a year yeah. contract. But it's- dude, it's great. I mean, we keep talking about Colin Kaepernick, like the way that we remember him as a player when he was first blackballed from the league when he was in his mid twenties. That dude's like in his mid thirties now. Well, of course he'd be bad now. Yeah, I mean, there's no. Well, I mean, I think honestly, probably the best case for him as far as like just pure play goes is Geno Smith. This guy didn't play. For how yeah. many years? But he and was, then he comes back at 32 and he, he plays. But he was on a fucking roster the whole time. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a huge difference for sure. Yeah. But it, it makes a stronger case for a guy who's been out of the game as long as Kaepernick has. Kaepernick's probably maximized his legacy in sports. Yeah. Well, I mean, he could do potentially do great things after, but it does seem like the Kaepernick hype train has left the building, you know? It's well, like, but I'm saying, like, what he did, Yeah. the stance... Because your your legacy in sports isn't just, like... I'm not talking about... I mean, not as on and... Not just as on-field legacy. I'm saying, like, Roberto Clemente mm. has this... If you look at his numbers, he was a very good player for his time. But he's not. He wasn't, like, an all-time great with a super long career. Yeah. He was a very good player who did a heroic social thing. Yeah. And now his legacy includes that. Yeah. And I think that, like, if Roberto Clemente was not an activist, he'd probably still be a Hall of Famer, but he'd be, like, a guy, like, that you don't – he's, like, one of those guys, like, a Willie Stargell or a or – a, That's exactly the name I was going to think. Maybe because he was another – well, he wasn't he, even, he'd yeah. probably even be like a Willie McCovey. He'd be like, oh. you know, like one of those. I, I'm trying <laughs> he's to think one of the Willies. Yeah, he's a. Uh, uh, I'm thinking of um, Legends of the Diamond, a game I had on NES. <laughs> I, had, I, I was against, thinking exactly Willie Starts. That's, that's funny. funny. Uh, but yeah, like a guy uh, that you're like, oh yeah, that guy was great. That you're yeah. like, like Stan Musial, where you're yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. a generic, very good Hall of Famer that, whose numbers don't stack up to modern inflated yeah. offense, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think like. So for his legacy, obviously that doesn't translate to hundreds of millions of dollars necessarily, right. but um, I, I I respect the shit out of Arian Foster. He's like a counter. Uh, he I believe him to be like even like Russell Okung, who's a little bit got some kind of like uh, dumb frat bro things. But <laughs> the dude is like going. He's like at least I believe him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I believe Arian Foster isn't. He's, like, going against the grain of what you're, yeah. is expected of him. I like that. Those guys always, like, they always have a following until they always do one thing. There's always right. one thing that, that fucks up. I feel like what Russell Okung did is just, 
have all of his money in Bitcoin and then lose sixty yeah. percent. He's it. probably not doing as well financially as he was. He's still doing better than either of us, I'm sure. Yeah. But yes, I'm but, sure that it's. I mean, you probably being a comic and a sports fan, you probably remember John Moffat, the guard for the Seahawks. Of course, of course. And that was another guy that people were like, "Ah, oh, he's different. We love him." Yeah. And then he fell off the deep end. He just did one of those one of those things that you you occasionally hear about, where you're selling ecstasy in a place like everyone who hasn't, who among us hasn't <laughs> been selling ecstasy in a While club in Milwaukee. Busted for public <laughs> urination. I mean, no one gets busted for public listen, urination unless you take the world's longest pee or something. I, I, listen, I'll tell you, if, uh, if if you got caught every time you pissed in public, yeah. I'd be out of a life sentence. As a comic who's out late, you, I'm sure it happens all the time. You probably still pee in public. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, like with it, I, you know, I've, within this, the month, or in 2023, I have pissed like four or five times on the side of the freeway or You're like an Amazon driver. Yeah, they always, dude. they always have those articles about how Amazon drivers can't find any place to pee. It's like, dude, you're driving around. Just hit up a McDonald's or whatever, man. Like it'll be fine. They're not open when comedy shows get over. That's the problem. <laughs> I, uh, I have a buddy who has a bottle designated in his car. Like a, it's like a Nalgene bottle. That's, Right. Wouldn't you get something you could throw away? Oh, that's disgusting. But it's because the mouth is wide enough. Apparently he has like a <laughs> no. like a five inch diameter Does cock. He have a tuna can yeah, penis. Yeah, <laughs> the urethra <laughs> is that big. <laughs> can't do this shit with Ashley Ryan, huh? Uh <laughs> do that. <laughs> The now, I'm never going to get over the the Nalgene bottle being the piss receptacle. He, I he, bet Nalgene didn't see that one coming. He should leave a review. <laughs> he was driving one day, and he goes, he goes, uh, or he was. We were driving to Montana together. He's driving because I'm a, a pretentious headliner, and he was featuring. And uh, he goes, "Can you grab me my water bottle?" And it's I grabbed like, it. And he like goes, the "Plot to Dumb and Dumber." Yeah, he goes, "Yeah, exactly." He goes, and, I, and I was, he's like, "Oh no, that's the wrong one." And then I had to get the whole explanation. The only reason I know this is because I grabbed the wrong bottle. It's the one you've been drinking out of. Yes, that's uh, this is <laughs> full of Jess Everett's piss, actually. <laughs> It's, uh, it's uh, what I call adrenochrome. That's what he tells me it is anyway. I don't know. I don't really know what adrenochrome is, but it's uh, that might get us beyond on YouTube also. <laughs> All right, I'm going to play this for a minute. We'll see if... Who's going to come up and, and join the live stream with us and watch the football games for, yes. for championships? So whatever the fuck this is, I think and, it's like uh, a barstool podcast. This up, looks like a legit Billy podcast. And I got DMs from somebody <laughs> being like, uh, just FYI, Arian didn't watch a second of the football games today. I saw him just eating ramen on the Lower East Side. <laughs> Tennessee hat. <laughs> Yo! And, Who the fuck? And so me and Billy were like, we know exactly where Arian went. So, <laughs> so Arian Foster has a podcast, by the way, or had a podcast. I can't remember mm-hmm. what it's called. He's got a rap career, Bobby Fino. He's friends with a comic named he Steve acted. Hofstetter. He did some acting. Well, what did he act in? Because we were talking he about. He was in Draft Day. He had a significant role in Draft gotcha, Day. I, don't, gotcha. I think he was actually in some other stuff, too. These types of guys, like Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving <laughs> starred in a feature film. I, okay. I, Kyrie, I think that. Kyrie Irving has lost his marbles and is kind of crazy now. But I will say that having watched Uncle Drew in theaters. Kyrie Irving was better than expected, as was every other basketball player that acted in that movie. Way better than expected. They were pretty I good. think actors suck, and everyone else would make better actors. Comics, every time you watch a movie where a comic is in it, you're like, yes. God. Even if it's a serious role, you're like, yeah. that's a great, he's doing a great job. You know, I really don't like method actors. Like, when I watch Daniel Day-Lewis, I'm Second like, episode talking about method actors. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> he tries so damn hard. You're right. like, wow, this is an Oscar-worthy performance. But, God, I know this means everything to him, and I don't like that. I yeah. want I want an actor that walks in the night before he went out to the bar mm-hmm. and was a superstar actor living his life just having drinks bought for him, hanging out with people, got shit-faced, fell asleep, got like four hours sleep, came in, made his call time, and still made a great feature film. That's the actor I want. Sure. You want uh, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Yes, yes, in the 90s. Yeah, an occasional <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. before he fell off the wagon, much like you fell off the wagon, or I guess before he got on the wagon. <laughs> We're going back to it. You are the insensitive person joking about Sobriety, not me. We'll make that clear. You went back to the place that oh, we right went right back on Wednesday. To <laughs> what the fuck? Right, a home. city full of almost ten. Imagine if you Jesus, just said how much ramen talk do we need? I couldn't do it. Yeah, it's, that's it's invasive, crazy. man. It's crazy. I Damn. get, I get, I get DMs about Billy all the time God, about what he's doing on any given Friday night. Just, it's like a little Batman network. <laughs> just saw Billy at a bar. You think hours eating ramen? <laughs> Jesus, we're still <laughs> on ramen talk. <laughs> 
was really boring. Uh, especially when the quarterback went out. I'm like, what, what is this? That game sucked. Yeah, this is one of the worst. I'm just not in the mood for football. I'm going to go get some ramen. Yeah, the second game was good. The bang- uh, Arian was telling me about how the NFL is rigged and how every year he used to get a script. Yeah. Day one of training camp that would mm-hmm. get dropped off at his locker. Mm-hmm. And you would have to, you know, it was like week one, you'll do this. Week two, you're going to have a hamstring injury. Week three, this is going to happen. Yeah. Week four, you're going to get three touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And so then you just have to, did you memorize those before the season started? Or would you go and rehearse the script before every game? Uh, we were really dedicated to it. So it was more so like um, that's what practice was about. <laughs> it was about practicing the script. Like this is what we're Dude, going on. Uh, he's. Yeah. It's perfect. He's going to miss this call. He's so good at yeah, this. They hate you. Yeah. And they love the we know he's a good actor. Uh, WWF, so it's like, you yeah, know, we know what's going to happen, but you just got to put on a show. Yeah. What did yeah. you think when you got the script in 2016 that said your career was going to fall off a cliff? <laughs> <laughs> that was 2015. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Around there. It was, yeah. was 2015. And uh, oddly enough, yeah, the script writers, it didn't have anything to do with that, actually. Uh, it just had more so to do with um, they needed a change of scenery in Houston. It was time to go. Yeah, it was time to go. So they, they wanted to get everybody out of Houston. That was the ultimate goal. So that that was what that uh, was about. <laughs> okay. It, it feels like Aaron Foster is fucking with everybody. No, of course he is. That's <laughs> this is. But the fact that you're even questioning it, I think, is great because it's this is why it's a perfect joke is because yeah. there's like 40 percent of people who are enough to fuel the tweets about it. Yeah. That aren't don't realize it's a joke. It's that's why yeah. I'm saying he's so funny. Yeah. To so just like immediately he's like an improv. Yeah, he's good. That was yeah. good. The way that he handled the questions was like, and you can see it. You can see it in his face. Like if you're watching the video, you can kind of see like he's got a little bit of like that sly look. About yeah. Him. He's he's funny yeah. and he's already funny and this is like the funniest thing an NFL yeah. player's ever done. Yeah. But it it did fuel a lot of speculation i mean there are a lot of people i mean hey that's the type of thing that somebody writes about it gets put online and then people just see the headline right and then of course they formulate their opinion this is like when a senator retweets an onion article <laughs> like as though it's serious right and it doesn't matter yeah. that's like an apolitical thing both sides have had fucking politicians get yeah. duped by a, a satire website right. and this is exactly like that and everybody's because I, I you do kind of like it is kind of like there's a thing where if it's there's a thing about the NFL where we all kind of have to pretend like that these guys aren't getting concussions every week. I mean, yeah, you have to have you have to like compartmentalize a little bit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So it's already like a little bit of that. So the there's a thing in uh, in wrestling called kayfabe. And I feel like, though I don't think football is actually scripted, I do think there's a kayfabe thing where we're like, we're all pretending this is okay, right? We're still yeah. doing that. We're still. Oh, I mean, the NFL trotting Demar Hanlon out at the Super Bowl yesterday. I was like, oh, it's nice that he's there, but they have him sitting next to Roger Goodell. It's like this is right. the poster boy for survival at this right. point. Like he didn't die. He almost died. <laughs> didn't die right. though. So we're gonna trot him out. Like, I mean, it's nice that they gave him that moment, but at the same time, it's like you're doing everything you can to prove to people, or at least try to convince them that this is okay yeah you know yeah it's uh but yeah shout out to arian foster i i love <laughs> arian foster he's one of my favorite athletes ever you call oh you yeah you called him the uh the Kyrie irving of football there, <laughs> just because of his acting that's all <laughs> it's because because he's a great actor <laughs> he's got he's severely anti-semitic also <laughs> he's not uh okay i want to do i want to end on this a couple golf things okay. which i don't really want to talk about golf a lot because I don't know a ton about. I play golf. I don't know a lot about. Yeah, I have, I by the way, I don't know. I road don't hacks know. on YouTube. I have for someone who doesn't know anything about golf, like pro golf. I have a golf YouTube channel uh, that people can check out. That's just me playing golf with mostly comedians. Eventually, I'll get you on it. We'll do this we'll okay. golf on that, film. That'll be interesting. That'll, you, we're not good. <laughs> we're not good. It's okay. Um, or you don't have to do it. It's also fine. But I want to talk about so Kevin Durant. There's a kind of a crazy trade deadline. The the yeah. the Nets officially got blown up. At a time, I was like, the Nets are going to be my team until the Sonics come back. And then a couple years later, they don't have any of the players that I like. So <laughs> I'm once They're again nobody's team yeah. now. <laughs> uh, maybe a uh, never mind. <laughs> um, Kevin Durant gets traded to the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, and he's had like a career that so he goes from obviously he starts his career in Seattle, plays with the Thunder comes close to winning a championship there, goes to Golden State, wins a championship there, and then is, like, mercurial, doesn't want to be, yeah. uh, wants to, like, win one on his own, it seems like. And I, and I could be missing some details on this. 
ends up in uh, in Brooklyn, and now he's in Phoenix. And I just I feel lo- it's the only time I felt lucky to have been a Sonics fan. Sonics specifically is we have our view of Kevin Durant. I think in Seattle is usually positive. Oh yeah, we're like the only city that probably really likes Kevin Durant. Yeah. He's the he's the perfect example of like live long enough to become the villain. Mm. Like people don't like him for reasons unknown. Like there's I don't know if there's a great reason to dislike him, but a lot of people dislike him. If he was in Seattle by now, he would be as hated as Russell Wilson. Yeah. He would be as hated as Alex Rodriguez. He'd be as hated as people felt about Griffey the moments after he left. Obviously, we regained some love yeah. for Griffey after a while. And it's I feel kind of lucky because like we get to view – it's like we get him in a time capsule, right, where we're yeah. like, things would have been different. Probably not. He probably would have fucking been just as, as, as uh, you know, abusive to the fan base or whatever you want to say. Like he would have been just as – just as disappointing to the fan base here. I'm sorry. I keep, this is rough to be this far apart because I just saw spit fly out of my mouth. Catch it. It's not, we're in HD. Everyone can replay it if they'd like to. But uh, yeah, it's, I feel lucky that we get like, we just get the positive. We only get, it's like a, you, he like, yeah, yeah died young. He, it's like he died for young. us. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And for the rest, I mean, p- people get so up in arms about, I mean, the, I think the thing that initially turned people on Kevin Durant is he became the guy that like, joined a super team you never want to be you can form the super team you can be steph curry and form the super team but you cannot go to join the super team that that seems to be a definitive line among yeah. nba fans and then they just get mad at super teams in general even though for like the last decade plus that's the only way to survive in this league is yeah. to be the super team really and it's like if you're not then who are you you're damian lillard or you're donovan mitchell and you cannot sell sneakers you have a signature sneaker but you cannot sell it so all these right. people they respect the idea of you but they don't actually support you yeah you're like you're like a uh, a punk rock musician that's <laughs> has a day job despite <laughs> ev- you're like every musician's favorite musician yeah and they're collecting million dollar checks, and you're working at a coffee shop so yeah. you can pay for gas to get out to play in fucking Raymond yeah. Washington. These, these people so support you with, uh, I don't even know, sentiments. That's yeah. about it. But they don't actually, you don't win. You don't win much. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fair. Well, the first super team is probably, um, I was thinking about this, probably Shaq coming to LA. Is that the first? I mean, and it's yeah, maybe. I mean, well, he didn't really join anybody. He just came to LA, though. Like when he came to LA, like, he, did he get there before Kobe did? He got there. This they went there the same year. Okay. But I, I mean, nobody knew what Kobe. Nobody knew was Kobe was going to become. Was, he was yeah. I mean, Kobe. he was. He went there the year that Kobe was drafted. But yeah, I mean, the, yeah, super teams. I mean, man. I mean, if you think about like the Bulls back in the day, they. I mean, it, it just so happens that they happened to draft. Two of the best, well, the Sonics drafted Scottie Pippen, I sure, guess. Sure, yeah, 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 But they happened to acquire, through the draft, two of the greatest players ever. But you could argue that was even a super team. They just didn't go out and sign free agents. Well, I don't think anyone I don't think anyone begrudges teams for, like, holding their teams together. It's yeah. it's the mercenary aspect yeah. that, they, that they And that's no, why that's they true. don't like Kevin Durant and they don't care about Steph Curry because Steph Curry was there. The team got built around him. Right. And... Kevin Durant is like latching on. He's he's yeah. riding and then the, the coattails. I mean the Heat, obviously. You don't everyone. get mad at the coattails. You get mad at the riders, right? Yeah, that's true. And I also like Kevin Durant's probably of all the guys that played on that team is probably like the most gifted player. Yeah, but still is is like the most. I think. Well, I think Draymond Green is disliked more than. <laughs> Reviled. You can't just go around kicking people in the balls. You can do it <laughs> once. You can do it once and people will give you a free pass. Everyone gets one free kick in the nuts. But you do it like three or four times and people are like, this is a We're, this is a problem. I'm sensing a th- method acting and ball kicking is going to be the real theme of this podcast as we go forward. <laughs> it's like jackass in a nutshell. <laughs> um, do you, okay, I want to I want to play two things. We're going to start with the boring one and then we'll go, which I, you could argue that if it's a boring thing, we just shouldn't talk about it on the podcast. But I do want to just watch this video <laughs> with you because it made my – I could cut a cigar with my asshole watching this. It's Jordan Spieth making this shot. I think he made it – it was last year. We've got to sit through a uh, an ad here. Apparently ESPN Plus, they still have to uh, sit through ads. <laughs> but um, anyway, the, so he's going to make this, like, very daring shot. This He hits this ball here. We'll put it in. So wait till they show like the drone footage. 
Yeah, there's. Here, I'll, I'm gonna start. It. So this doesn't make it look. This is terrifying. Yeah, he could fall off this cliff. Yeah. I went over and took a stance, and it is. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah. Well, he has been battling. I would be pissing my pants, literally. I'd probably tell my caddy to stand closer and grab me if anything goes awry. So, so anyway, the, they interview him after this, and he regrets doing it. His, his caddy told him not to. He regrets doing it um, for obvious reasons because he was standing at the top of a fucking cliff. I'm scared of heights, so for me, this is like immediately would if yeah. I had done this, it would be the dumbest. There's, I'd probably do it, but I. You think you would do it? Yeah. Yeah, but 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 well, here's usually, the question though, because they're changing this because they're moving their line back because people are recreating this shot. They're taking this like risky shot. <laughs> Someone's like, gonna patrons. die, right? Someone's gonna die trying this shot. Now. Exactly. Yeah. So now, in if you're playing in, and also by the way, this is the Pebble Beach Pro Am. This is not the Masters. This is not the PGA Championship. It's the Pebble Beach Pro Am. Yeah, I get it. And no, I, I mean, I. <sighs> It's so, one of those things that, like, it, it doesn't – when you're actually the one doing it, when you can't see the drone footage and this dude's, like, inches from falling off a cliff when he takes his shot, like, when you when you don't have that angle, it doesn't look that bad. Like, I'm sure to him it didn't seem that bad. Like, there's a cliff there, but I've got a foot between my foot and the edge of the cliff. I'll be fine. Like, I think, I, let me, I think his quote might be later on in this. Uh, um – yeah, he said, uh, I think I saved a stroke. Uh, does the reward outweigh the ri- Does the ro- reward outweigh the risk? Not if you think the risk was dying, but also. <laughs> Not if, if you <laughs> think the risk. That's a pretty big risk. Also, I felt I could whack it over the water with a seven iron and get up near the green. And I thought up near the green would be easier hitting a seven iron from than from 10 yards back. I'm okay, like, can I tell you the most annoying thing about golf real quick? Yeah, go ahead. It's how every golfer likes to explain their shot in excruciatingly yes. boring detail. It's like, what happened? Well, I had a par. But that's not the end of the story. They go on for 15 minutes about how they got the par. I don't give a shit. No one gives so a shit. So should I keep reading this whole thing? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, keep going. <laughs> so anyway, that's just like I the the shot itself. Uh, what is the dumbest thing? What's the like biggest risk you've ever taken in sports? I mean, by the way, last I'm going to tell you Probably mine. Probably sack tap last yeah, okay, week. Yeah, I was going to say that's that is flirting with danger. Because mine is, I remember the guy. I actually, anytime I do comedy in Enumclaw or Buckley, Washington, I say his name to see if people know who it is. Okay. Because I threw a ball at a guy named Tyler Slauson's head when I was playing high school baseball. Because he was a dickhead to our team. Don't get me wrong, but. <laughs> I threw a ball at his head, which is dangerous for him and dangerous for me because I actually hit a guy once in a in an invitational tournament, mm-hmm. and my uh, my baseball coach at the time was this dude. His name was Mr. Cooper. He went by Mr. Cooper. He wasn't not the Mark Curry not one. Not hanging with. No, there but, will be no hanging with this Mr. Cooper. But he was he specifically went by Mr. Cooper in the staff directory. It said Mr. Cooper. People found out his first name and went. If you called him by his first name, you were like suspended, basically. But this dude was the man. He's he actually passed away uh, uh, five six years ago. So you piece of shit for laughing at him. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry. But he I threw a curveball like a big swinging curveball that hit a guy in the back. Yeah. Like it was so slow that I was like, oh, I I didn't even consider the guy could be mad. And that my coach <laughs> like cut him off charging the mound. Yeah. And but Tyler Slauson, I threw a fastball at his head on purpose. I was yeah. trying to hit him in the head. <laughs> I missed or he dodged it. Whatever. But uh, that's probably the most dumb thing I've ever done. Sack tap is like, I think, that's like throwing a punch in a baseball game. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's pretty much right up there. I Man, most of the dumb things I've done uh, have been at the rec league level. When I was in high school, I was pretty straight and narrow. Uh, in a flag football game in college, uh, we were playing a frat team, and it was – it wasn't like the good frat, like the mm-hmm. athletic frat. It was the annoying frat. And sure. their quarterback was just, I mean, he was the worst. He was just talking, but he wasn't very good. But he was he just wouldn't stop talking shit. And about towards the end of the game, we had a big enough lead that I was like, I can comfortably get thrown out of this thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just noticed this camera's off. Oh, that's, so I, I'm the only one being found? Is I that what you're telling so. me? That's a... Uh, that's how it goes. Come on. Right? That's how it goes, I guess. We're going to get over. We'll get the <laughs> – we'll splice together the, together the footage. Let me look at this real quick, will we? Yeah, yeah. 
but go ahead. And, I, I can hear you still. Okay, yeah. So I uh, I decided I was going to tackle this guy in a flag football game, and he was their quarterback, so it worked out great. I was just on the defensive line. I got into a situation where I, you know, in flag football, I had a free release. That's as free of a release <laughs> as you can get in flag football. No one really blocks. But I just laid this dude out. I mean, I hit him with everything I had. I just put everything I had into it. It was a dick move. I'm not going to lie. Because you never see it coming in flag football. So you're not – like, I'm sure he saw me running towards him and, like, like okay, he might get my flag, but that's about it. And I just, like, leveled this guy. And I'm a, bi- I'm a pretty big dude. Even back then, sure. like, I was – I hit him hard. And he was pissed. And he came up th- swinging. He was throwing punches as soon as he got up. And, you know, we both our teams separated us. I was immediately ejected. I earned it. Like, I knew I was yeah. going to be ejected for this. But I was – a couple of guys on my team were very disappointed in me, rightfully so. A couple of guys said it was the most awesome thing they'd ever seen. <laughs> so I was like, I, you know, everybody's happy. I can't guess. win them all, you know. Can't, no, can't you win can't. over every constituent. No. <laughs> That's probably the dumbest thing I've outwardly done besides the sack tab. Gotcha. All right, so now the last one, dumb thing at a sporting event. Is uh, so th- this is like a crazy. Oh, oh Jesus Christ! Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? We gotta turn the volume down. Oh my god! Uh, this is at the Waste Management ah, Phoenix yes. Open. A great crazy sport. Yeah, uh, Phoenix, great place to be in February. Yeah, um, the Waste Management is notorious. I've had a lot of friends who have gone as spectators to this thing and they say it's just it's like if a tailgate took over an entire sporting event sure. basically yeah so okay so we're gonna watch the streaker because oh, yeah, this is this the do you, do you remember we've had this like <laughs> interesting window of where streakers used to be they would televise them yeah. and then as though they were serial killers they're like we don't want to ha- we don't want to promote this behavior so we're not going to show them on tv yeah it's and weird. then what happened after that is everyone has phones. So we're all going to see, not only are we going to see the streaker, we're going to see 15 different angles <laughs> and we're going to see his actual cock. We're not going to see it here, but like in, in real life or on the internet, you can find like. <laughs> Let's go! So it says 19 toll. He's wearing like a denim <laughs> Speedo. As far as streakers go, he's definitely good. He's, he's crushing good. it, He's dude. a good streaker, man. Mullet, sunglasses. The 19th hole is, I, when I first saw this, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. And then, have you ever seen a streaker evade security this well? <laughs> Dives into the water hazard. Belly flops into it. Yeah, fair. Yeah. He's not getting a high score on that dive. <laughs> But then you're like a you're a cop at this thing, right? You're like I get the the cake cop gig. Yeah. I get to go watch a fucking golf tournament from closer than any fan. It's could. probably a lot of alcohol enforcement sure. as a cop at this thing. Yeah. Sure. But no you're probably not going like Am I gonna have to dive into this fucking pond? You, you kinda just to... wait. Yeah, at that point. You're like, I wish I'd yeah. could just wait for him to get out. Is there an event, an amount of money? What would make you streak i mean i would need my bail paid for first of all. i need all the prison fees all the uh all the any court fees anything that would have to be paid for and then i need to pocket like tens of thousands tens of tens thousands. of thousands that's all it would take sure well because <laughs> because you're already like you've been featured on the mariners uh jumbotron as a oh, super yeah. fan so like yeah. all of your all of your uh i your, feel like i got tricked into that <laughs> oh, that's. I think we should play that. Can we, can no, we play that? no, we <laughs> no, dude. I, you know, the thing about just that is a good streaker. That's a funny. Like everyone enjoyed that. Even the cops have like, kind of like a grin on their face as yeah. it's happening. Now it, you're right though. The TV broadcast man, they treat every streaker, every field runner like they are an international terrorist. Yeah, and exactly. they have like everything when they're not showing it. They have to talk like. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to them. Yeah. They personally are scarred. How will they explain this to their children? Also, this streaker found the perfect event to streak at. Because if you streak <laughs> at a football game, there's a chance yeah. there's going to be a fucking strong safety that takes you out. Yeah, that dude but, got laid out by Bobby Wagner earlier yeah. this season. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you're going to have fucking Scotty Scheffler yeah. sticking you 
with good form. <laughs> I mean, it'd be you know pretty. I mean, I, mean, I would watch awesome. that if a golfer just took out like his six iron and just destroyed <laughs> this guy, like just hit him right in the nuts. That would be high entertainment. 